Hi everybody and there's some more royal musings from me. It's still February the 14th and I will probably add some more royal musings after this one film tomorrow morning uh, but it is the afternoon and since I posted my last royal musings video news broke finally of what crown Camilla the Queen Consort would be crowned with at King Charles III's coronation. So wind back um, a few weeks, a few months even, and there was speculation, rather weird speculation, um, I thought anyway, that she would actually be crowned with the George IV diadem, uh, which, is the, which is the diadem that Queen Elizabeth, form, the late Queen, used to wear on arrival um, to the state opening of Parliament. Well, I always said, no, that can't be true because it's not a crown, it's a diadem and you cannot be crowned with something other than a crown, especially when there's quite a few other former crowns, either set with diamonds or with the diamonds removed, that could be used at the coronation. Diamonds can always be reset into crowns because the royal family do have lots of them. Anyway, Buckingham Palace yesterday broke the news. I did make a video on it showing pictures, so do go and check that out. I will leave it linked below, showing the Queen Mary's crown. They announced with great flourish um, that she would be crowned with Queen Mary's crown, but there was a few changes because the Queen Mary's crown uh, and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother's crown, uh, both consort crowns in recent times, were fitted or set rather with the Kohinoor diamond. Now, lots of, um, lots of, I suppose, um, angst has been attached. To, controversy has been attached to the Kohinoor diamond. So, I didn't expect that diamond to be used, and I thought it might be replaced at some point. But now that Camilla has chosen a crown, so she hasn't gone with the Queen Mother's crown. Uh, she's gone with Queen Mary's crown of course, the late Queen's grandmother. So now that she's chosen that, they also, Buckingham Palace also announced that some of the stones were going to be replaced with the Cullinan diamonds. So of course, the Cullinan diamonds have been um, worn, well, some of them, in brooch form by the late Queen. So I think that those are going to be reset in place of the Kohinoor diamond. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with the Kohinoor diamond, um, but anyway, that's what's happened. So to avoid controversy, um, the diamonds have been, or will be, reset. The crown is now out of the jewel house and uh, is being reset. King Charles's, um, the St Edward's crown, has already made its way back to the jewel house, having been resized. Um, so I was thinking about the jewels, the Clinton diamonds. I don't think they will stay in the crown after the coronation. I think, for a time, they might go back on display in the jewel house so that people can actually see the crown as it was when it was used in the coronation uh, with Queen Camilla. Uh, but then after a time, I think the diamonds will be taken out again and given back to the Queen Consort because the Cullinan diamonds are not actually part of the crown jewels. They are part of... Uh, the Queen's or the monarch's personal jewellery collection. So they aren't, they aren't actually supposed to be in the jewel house. They are personal possessions. So I think after a time of being on display, either in the jewel house or there could even be an exhibition at Buckingham Palace where all um, visitors can go and visit, I think personally they will be returned and could be used again in brooch form or... I was thinking what Queen Camilla could do with them. Now, Queen Camilla is known for wearing lots of chokers, lots of choker necklaces, and I think some of those Cullinan diamonds that were used in brooch form could make some really lovely chokers, some centrepieces for some chokers or some kind of necklace. Um, Queen Camilla, you know, Camilla as Duchess of Cornwall, um, did does wear brooches, um, but now that she's Queen Consort... I think she could turn those beautiful diamonds into some chokers um, or necklaces, perhaps for state occasions or just when she really wants to be really, really fancy. So anyway, that's my royal musings uh, and we will return to me um, in the morning when I'm waking up with my cup of coffee. Good morning. It is the next day. It is February the 15th. It was Valentine's Day last night. I went out and had a really good Valentine's meal. 
I woke up, I've got my really warm fleecy Udi on, the cats have been in and out, and it's been really cold and frosty because you can see the frost on the bench. So I was just thinking, oh, there's a cat just zooming in. I was just thinking about um, an article that I saw about whether Harry and Meghan would attend the coronation. So yes, we're gonna have some more royal musings. Um, so I was just kind of thinking about it. Let me just pick up my coffee. And the article was kind of indica indicating that invitations had been sent out and that replies need to be back uh, whether you're going to attend or not by the latest of April. So time is pressing on. Um, so if indeed it is true and Harry and Meghan have been invited, which I do believe that they have, um, and I've always said that they're in a bit of a difficult, difficult position, one that I do think that they've made themselves, um, but they are in a tricky position because if they do go, then, you know, they, they run the risk of being accused of trying to exploit their royal connections and trying to pick up a little bit more of that that royal glamour to be able to go back and monetize it somewhere or do interviews or that kind of thing. Then if they don't go, they'll be accused of snubbing it and, you know, harbouring bad feelings and all of that business. So they are in a bit of a difficult position. And there was lots of this talk about Harry in a hurry. <laughs> So if you don't know, Harry in a hurry is what the press of uh, the term that they've coined to use Harry just coming by himself as, as one option available to the Sussexes um, over a 48 hour period, literally flies in, has a little bit of, of a mini rest, does the coronation or attends the coronation and then flies back to California. Um, so the the story goes, of course, and we, we don't know if this is true, but, you know, a lot of things that have come out in the press do end up seem to have at least had some basis in truth, if not the whole truth, at least some basis in truth. Um, so they've also been saying um, that Harry sort of wants this deal with his father and William wants to have some sort of meeting before he would leave California. Now, we assume, obviously we mean some sort of virtual meeting because he can't not leave California to have a physical meeting. Anyway, I think it, it would be some sort of online meeting to discuss whether he should, you know, get a guarantee that he would keep his titles and then perhaps have a front line, a front bench or front pew position, prime position at the coronation to be seen, which kind of indicates more that he's thinking along the lines of it's all for show and that he just wants to take advantage of it, that he's not really here for his father um, for the coronation, which is actually why you should be there. You know, if, if, your, if your own father is being crowned uh, as, as king, then I think you should be there for him rather than, and the rest of your family, um, rather than just yourself which that kind of indicates if that's true it indicates that it would be quite self-serving anyway so that request doesn't seem like it's had much legs i don't think any agreement has been struck which then begs the question what do they do do they both come over without archie which i think is unlikely because um may the 6th of course is archie's birthday, which I still think would be a rather nice occasion uh, to share with a coronation. You'd definitely remember that birthday, wouldn't you? So even being so young, I think you would definitely remember if a coronation had happened on your birthday. So I actually think that's quite a nice thing. But anyway, um, so I don't think Megan would not come without Archie. But the question is, would Megan come at all? Um, will, it, will we just get the Harry in a hurry? And if Meghan does come, you know, what sort of feelings are there going to be about her? I, I really don't know. It's, it's a tricky one. Um, but I do think that the palace, you know, probably hold the Trump cards in effect. I think by inviting them, it kind of almost takes away their power to either force themselves upon the coronation, attend, or, or sort of ob abscond from it. So the ball is very much in the Sussex's court. What will they do? I don't think any sort of deal, any guarantee to keep titles will be done. Um, I think that's a little bit simplistic, really. So we will most definitely see. Oh, yes, and going back to um, 
Camilla wearing Queen Mary's crown. I don't think I spoke about the detachable arches. Um, I did I did mention it in, in, in the specific video that I made. But yes, she has elected, the, the Queen Mary's crown has eight detachable arches and Camilla has chosen to remove four of them. So there's only obviously four left, uh, which is very much in the same style as the late Queen Mother's coronation crown uh, because she only had uh, four arches and I think they were actually detachable as well um, but also something quite funny um, the Koh-i-Noor diamond the one that's all really controversial obviously that's not being used it's being replaced with the Cullinan diamonds I think it was Cullinan, Cullinan the fifth third and fourth possibly um, which I do think are a lot better shapes to be honest the Cullinan I always thought that the Cullinan, right in the centre of the consort's crown, almost made it look a bit like... It kind of had a bit of a Cyclops look. Yes, I know. <laughs> but once you get that image in your head, you can't really get rid of it. It does look a bit Cyclopsy. So, I actually think the Cullinan diamonds, especially the Cullinan the fifth, would look really lovely as a centrepiece to that um, particular crown. So, I'm not at all mad at losing the koh -i -Noor. and of course there is no um, no decision on whether or what's going to happen to the koh -i -Noor in terms of what after the coronation, you know, could it even be reset into a piece of jewellery that Camilla could wear privately? Because we do know that the royals obviously have very private functions, dinner parties and such like, so, you know, some jewels are often worn simply privately and never in public. Um, that we never, ever, ever get to see. So could the koh -i -Noor actually be set into maybe a choker necklace or something that Camilla could wear for private occasions, maybe entertaining at Highgrove? Uh, because, of course, they still uh, retain Highgrove. I think they've leased it off Prince William. So, yeah, that's my sort of royal musings for, for this moment just want to say a really big thank you for watching my royal musings video yesterday um, a lot of you commented saying that you did like these rather informal garden morning rumblings musings whatever you want to call it uh, so I will make more of them like I say it's it's really easy for me to just you know whip my phone out and record a nice peaceful easy listening chat about the royal family which is what i do every single morning anyway i come outside and i mumble to myself all about what's going on in the royal family and it helps to collate my thoughts so that i can make the more formal videos but to be honest if you quite like these sorts of videos i can carry on doing that so do let me know again if you would like more of them because i definitely can do them in fact i quite have enjoyed doing them and just talking to you like this and like I say it's really easy listening and it's really easy to convert me into a podcast I've said this for years actually all you've got to do is just put the screen if you're watching on a mobile device just pop me in your pocket you know just leave the screen on if you can't play w without it being on put me in your pocket and then just listen because you get all the nice noises um yeah, so so thank you for watching. <laughs> it really does mean the world to me. If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. That always helps with YouTube, with all the searches to help other people f find this contact, this content. Um, and it always helps if you leave a comment because it shows um, that the video gets some level of engagement. And it's really important to share. Share the video on your social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it might be, because then it makes the video more discoverable. Um, hopefully so that people people can join in, uh, which would be really, really nice to build up a Royal Musings community by Royal Reviewer. So thank you for watching. Please do all those things, and I will see you in the next video. So from me, to you all, and goodbye.